How long was this order intended to last? Uh, there wasn't a, a time that was based on the conduct of the people who were involved. If uh, conduct was proper and, and they followed the, the rule, there it, it was no, um, it's just so that they un understood it was a, it's a, a temporary basis to be done with, based on their conduct and how they treated themselves in accordance with the order. You say temporary basis. Is there anything in this order indicating it's temporary? No. Is it fair to say that you communicated to individuals covered by this order that the order was intended forever? I don't know I said that. Did you say that? I don't believe I said that. Was it your intent that this order go on forever? No. How long was the order? The order was, as I just stated, it was depending on uh, their conduct and how, how when they came into the courthouse, how <coughs> the conduct was and how things went. If everything was, uh, conduct was proper and they had no problems, then there's no reason why they were going to be proceeding. Now, this, Mr. Bernard's case, Kruger's case, you're aware that he argued in his defense on this case that he called your office on the day he came in and did not get left a message. I don't know that. You're not aware of that. Do you know whether he called your office on that day? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember the day this happened. But if he called and told somebody what he wanted, he would have been given permission to come in. So anybody, not even, not even a deputy, even, even a receptionist? No, I, it was clear in my previous testimony that the deputies were the ones that make that decision. Now, sir, you're familiar with a woman um, the name of Lynn Zaretsky? Yes. Yeah. And I want to ask you, from also representing her in this proceeding, what acts, if any, did she commit that you allege justified this order? Uh, she was part of the uh, five that were creating the disturbance. So what did she do? As being one of the members that were doing the, uh, the same thing. Well, what is it she <coughs> did? We're talking here now about a criminal prosecution, not about group liability. What did she do? Uh, she came as part of the group, and that's what is part of the, there can be a group liability, she being a member, and conducting herself in the same manner. She may not have had a camera, but she was <coughs> with the group, conducting themselves in that manner that caused the, uh, the disturbance or the problems with the support system. So she was part of a group, and that's the sole basis. No, I just it was a, no. The sole basis, as I just said, was the conduct of those people. She was one of them, and going with them. Well, what and was the conduct was interfering with, or coming and interacting, or I saw harassing. In my opinion, harassing the court staff that they were leaving. Okay, but what did she do that was harassing? She was one of the others. The same, getting close by and. And uh, she didn't have a camera to stick in someone's face, but uh, she was part of that group. Did you, see, did you specifically see her get close by? Um, I, she was there with them, so yes. So is that a yes or no? Yes. She was part of. So she got too close. I don't, I don't know that she got within six inches of anybody, but she was part of the group that was creating the uh, disturbance where she was, they were yelling at the staff. and and creating the aura of fear amongst the people of the How close did she get to us? I don't remember. I'm, I'm looking at a camera, so. It was a course of conduct that caused that problem. So she was part of that course of conduct. So whether she got, she individually got too close to any staff member or not, you don't know. I think so. No. This group of uh, approximately five individuals got 
too close to court personnel in the Superior Courthouse parking lot, and some of these individuals had video cameras. It's, uh, that's not a simplification. It's a course of conduct where they're yelling and, and the uh, recording the people, the license plate number of them, the whole course of conduct that put them in fear of uh, confrontation with five people in, in the normal course of their business as they were attempting to go home. Right, but, but take any one of those instances, the allegedly getting too close, using a video camera, the selling the license plate, how are any of those affected by these no trespass orders? Well, they can go, the, the issue is that they're, they want to stay, and actually they came back at the next day, and that's how they issued the order. They came back and stood on the sidewalk and, and to do the same thing, we just gave them the order. There was nothing wrong with them, and they knew they could do that. That was the issue. The issue was being in close proximity to the staff so that they felt that they were threatened or uh, being harassed. Right. But how is that problem addressed by issuing them a generic no trespass order, which is basically simply saying call first? How would it be any different if they called your office before they went to the parking lot? You, you leave all right there anyway. It's not like you have to travel 20 miles to the scene of the event. How does this no trespass order accomplish any of the, or address any of the concerns that you've outlined? The no trespass order lets us know they're coming and we can be there as necessary so the court staff can move freely to their car and without being um, threatened by, by the group. Oh. And the court staff will know that they're there. But the last day was when they were finally driven off the property, they were waiting in the parking lot and waited for the staff to come out and then they came over after. Right. But, but where's, the, where's the sheriff's office located? Downstairs. In the Superior Courthouse? Yes. How far from the parking lot? It's in the, in the adjacent to the parking lot. So you don't need an advance phone call we're coming to the parking lot in order to provide, if you really need to provide more security in the parking lot, you can certainly do it without this type of order. No, because there may not be anybody there. Um, it's very, very feasible that there are, if there's no prisoners in, and this is happening after work, if there are no prisoners in downstairs when there's liable to the deputies have a lot of other things to do, if they don't need to be in that office, they're not in the office. Well, they're in the building. No. You have nine deputies. That's correct. And yourself. <coughs> there is a need for people. To, I mean, you, you, if you felt there was a need for people in the parking lot, you put them in the parking lot, correct? Yes. And if an illegal act is engaged in the parking lot, you can arrest somebody in the parking lot, correct? Yes. Have, have any of these individuals ever been arrested for doing anything illegal in the parking lot? Uh, I don't think either one of these two have. Right, I have a second. 